In this video, I'm going to share with you all of the new gameplay features for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. There are lots and lots of things to show, and I'm going to try and cover everything that I possibly can. Anything multiplayer, Civ, or balance related will be covered in their own separate videos, but let's jump right in. There are a ton of new things in DE some affecting gameplay and others affecting quality of life or visual improvements. First, and most obviously, are the graphics. Everything, and, and I mean everything, have been given a makeover for DE. The terrains, the units, the buildings, the UI, the icons, everything. This includes extra animations and new remastered sound effects as well. And I have to say, I think they've done a great job on the graphics. And after just a few hours in the beta, I quickly adjusted to the new graphics after finding them quite jarring at first. However, once you do become accustomed to them, it is hard not to admire how buttery smooth the animations are and to appreciate the small details which you can zoom into. Yes, that is right, you can now zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And if you're using a 4K monitor with the Ultra HD textures installed, it's going to absolutely blow you away. All of this graphical fidelity does come at a price though. Not only is the game a massive download, but unless you have a reasonably modern PC, then performance may be a little bit of a struggle. There are four new civilizations, which I will cover in depth in individual videos. Although I will say that the Cumans, Bulgarians, Lithuanians, and Tartars are all very cavalry focused civs and do seem to be extremely powerful at the time of making this video. Three of them get their own campaigns as part of the last cans. This is the Bulgarian Ivayalo campaign, the Kuman Kotyan Khan campaign, and the Tatar Tamerlane campaign. These all come beautifully presented on the new campaign maps, where you can find a grand total of 24 standalone campaigns, which is the same as hundreds of hours of single player immersion. For those that enjoy the single player experience, there's also the historical battles, which can be accessed now from the main menu. These aren't brand new, but they have been polished, much like everything else in DE, with new voice acting and graphics. If you've watched any competitive Age of Empires before, then you'll know that civilizations have usually been represented by the icon of their unique unit. However, this is all going to change thanks to the brand new graphics for civilization icons. Each Civ now has a shield emblazoned with their unique emblem. It's going to take a while to learn and get used to these, but it's definitely a nice to have. Perhaps though, a more useful graphic improvement is the new building foundations. It's now possible to identify a building by its foundation alone when it's being constructed removing the need to click on it to find out, like in the old games. Text can now be queued along with units, which is really useful for maximizing your efficiency. Using the town center as an example, you can queue a villager, then queue loom, and then another villager right after. And it's even possible to now bind text to hotkeys, which are completely customizable under the building's hotkey options. These queued units and texts are also now always visible on the global queue overlay just below your resources. This is really handy for keeping track of everything at a glance. It's also now easier to control villagers with the updated command queue. This is very much a standard in modern RTS titles, but it essentially allows you to tell your villager to build a house, build a mining camp, do the hokey cokey, and then go and chop down some wood without any further intervention. This could take some getting used to by the older crowd, and if you don't really want to use this new system of command queuing, then it is possible to revert to the old way in the settings. I also have a tip for those using the new system. When you select a villager that is gathering a resource and command queue them to build houses, for example, they won't actually start building the houses until after the current resource that they are harvesting is depleted. Personally, I don't think this behavior makes much sense, However, if you hold the control button instead of shift, they will immediately leave their gathering in favor of completing your new task. Another tip relating to unit control, and all new for DE, is the ability to move units to a point. If you select a group of villagers and right click on a location, they will usually keep their distance to one another. 
However, if you hold Alt and then right click, you can see that the units now converge on the click location. And if for whatever reason your villagers won't do as they're told, there's a new revolutionary delete technology. While having a group of units selected and holding shift and then pressing delete, you can delete the entire group instead of deleting individual units at a time. There have also been additional UI improvements, including the villager counter in the resources bar to show how many villagers you have in total, as well as the idle button next to it showing how many total idles there are. When selecting groups of units, you can now see the total number of units selected. And when you add groups of units into control groups, these then appear along the bottom of the screen as little icons, which show the number and type of unit in the group. On top of this, the UI can be scaled in the options menu to give you a lot more flexibility. If you struggle to see the icons, for example, you can make the UI larger, or if you want to see more of the game screen, you can make the UI much smaller. Further on the topic of queues, there's a new way to queue farms in 2019. No longer do you need to spam click the farm queue button. Instead, there is now an auto reseed button and 60 wood will automatically be delivered to any villagers in need of a new farm. This is great for late game situations where there's plenty of wood to keep reseeding farms for, well, eternity really. There's also some not so useful features such as the military drag select. Now personally, I would turn this off immediately and throw it on the nearest bonfire. If you want to drag box your army and have the game automatically ignore any villagers in your selection, then it might sound useful. Until of course you're trying to repair your trebuchets and you can't select the villagers without individually selecting them and adding them to a control group and well, it just gets really messy and I'd just rather not, to be honest. There's a whole heap of new taunts, like the soon to be iconic, you can resign again. But these taunts have much more purpose beyond just trash talking. The new AI system allows you to give much more intricate commands to your computer allies, such as telling them to attack the enemy with a specific type of unit, or even more impressively, asking them to build walls between two specific locations on the map. This is absolutely awesome for players who prefer single player and want to dual wield a pair of hardest AIs to do their bidding. On the topic of AI, there's a brand new difficulty mode, Extreme. This new difficulty level isn't actually much harder than the hardest AI in the HD edition. However, the jumps in difficulty between the different levels of AI is now reduced, meaning that players will find it a little easier to progress when practicing against the computer. If you want to see me beating the new Extreme AI, then look out for that video coming in the upcoming days hit the subscribe button and the bell to get a notification of when I upload a new video. The devs have done a lot to improve the accessibility of this version of the game, which is very commendable. For those struggling with color blindness, there's now various options to help with this. There's also a huge variety of options for game narration, even down to selected objects narration and tooltip narration. For further visual aid, it's also possible to highlight objects when selected or even when hovering over them. I'm sure that some people will find these features useful and I'm glad that the game is now even more accessible than ever before. While we're looking in the settings menu, let's also take a look at the new hotkeys. From here, you can now create different hotkey profiles, which are really handy if you share your computer. You can also select from previous familiar hotkey sets and edit any new hotkeys from there. Aside from the new tech hotkeys, which I mentioned earlier, there's also brand new select all hotkeys. Under game commands, you now have the ability to select all archery ranges, barracks, idle villagers, and so on at once. Finally, DE also added the ability to rotate gates, which is actually set to control and mouse wheel by default. So watch out for that if you are used to using the user patch. Accessible from the main menu is the new Art of War section. In here, you'll be able to learn more advanced things about the game. They've taken the concept that I had years ago for my interactive Fast Castle tutorial and expanded on it massively and built them directly into the game. It's very useful for new players, especially those looking to try out multiplayer. You can also receive gradings based on your performance, allowing you to keep practicing until you get gold or an A+. There's five training guides available with step-by-step -step interaction to help you to become more familiar with more competitive aspects and further prepare for multiplayer games. Before we wrap up this video, let's finally take a look at the new scenario editor. 
I'm really excited for all of the possibilities which the new scenario editor will allow. Custom game modes have always been a lot of fun and helped to keep the game alive for so many years with classic maps such as Class or Blood. We should expect to see some more exciting and complex scenarios in the near future thanks to some of the new triggers which have been added to the game. Most notably, variables, which allow you to store, track and check for custom values, something that has never really been possible before, or at least without doing a lot of fiddly tricks to achieve something similar. There are other conditions and effects too, which I won't go into detail about, but let's just say that I'm very hyped to see what gets created in the hands of the community. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I'll leave you with this. Aegis now works on farms, and it even allows villagers to one-shot boar. I have covered as much as I reasonably can in this video, but I'm sure there'll be a couple of things here or there that I may have missed. Let me know in the comments if you've spotted any more improvements from the previous games. I'll be uploading more videos over the coming days to cover the new sibs, multiplayer and other features of Definitive Edition, so hang tight for that. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.